No, all these big Eva clowns don't do that. Why? Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. John MacArthur is making big waves in Big Eva. Coming up next. All right. Hi everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, plenty of new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining the ship, the cause, the movement. Um, no, but really, <laughs> thank you for coming along. It's been... <clears throat> Uh, it's wonderful. It's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, drop a comment. If you're a new subscriber, let me know. Uh, I know sometimes it pops up and gives me notifications. I've seen a few names here and there. I don't really know most of these people. Uh, and that's great. You know, the whole goal is to unify people online using the platform, basically using the platform against itself, because let's be real here. YouTube is not some evangelical organization or some Bible thumping, um, society group company, nothing like that. Now, I'm not the only Christian. There's plenty of Christians online and, and many others as well, as you well know, being on YouTube. So that being said, thank you. Drop a comment. Let me know if you are a new subscriber. I'd love to hear from you, where you're from, and so on. At least maybe the state. You don't have to tell me like your address. Don't do that, please. Uh, but just uh, go ahead with that. A bit a, ma more about me. Uh, I am a husband and a father, a uh, father of four. I'm a pastor. And most of all, I am a follower of Christ. I'm a believer. Um, in the classical sense of, I believe that there is a God. I believe that God created the heavens and the earth. I believe that he upholds the earth and the heavens and everything in it. I believe that he is Lord of heaven and earth and all things, not just my own personal life, but I believe he's Lord over everything, uh, as the clip scripture clearly says. Furthermore, I believe that people are sinners. I believe that people have fallen short of a simple command to obey God, to follow God. All the way back to our first parents, Adam and Eve, we rebelled. We chose rebellion. We chose disobedience. We did not, uh, we weren't coerced. We weren't forced. God didn't make us do it, etc. And I believe people are sinners. People are fallen. People have missed the mark. It's the, the target is sin. When you miss the target, that's sin. Uh, the whole goal is to hit the target, hit the bullseye every time, and I and you don't hit the bullseye and target so often, right? And even if we, from here on out, <laughs> hit the target every single day of our lives, we've missed it before. And then we have to have, there has to be uh, substitution, there has to be some sort of payment for that, <clears throat> because God is a just God. And if we want to live with holy, Him and holiness, separate which is holiness, is separate, yet he's still near to us, there has to be payment. And that payment is the Lord Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and was resurrected, defeating both sin and death. So when you come to Christ, you're born again. You have a second life, a new life in him. So anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. That being said, John MacArthur is in hot water, quote unquote, again, uh, with the Big Eva elites. This is a Daily Wire article that covers this sermon of a guy who posted a video on Twitter. I'm not going to get into all it. I know several people have probably already watched other guys uh, do, or maybe gals too, do coverage on this. Uh, I want to try and bring some scripture to bear. Sometimes people miss the scripture uh, or we just don't talk about it. I think it's assumed or I don't know what. Cut all that out. Cut all that out. This is my weekly podcast. And so taking just various subjects in the church and the culture, in just internet in general, uh, and looking at these things and using scripture. So being against the world, because at one point I was in the world, you were in the world, and someone was against you, but for your sake. Someone shared the gospel, proclaimed the good news to you, and so on. They said, your life isn't right the way it is. You're a sinner. You're fallen. You're broken. You're messed up. And there is a better way. God has made propitiation, substitution. He has provided a way for you to be reconciled, redeemed, forgiven. So that's the whole point of this channel, being against the world for the world. That's contra mundum. That's against, right? Contra, contradiction, contrary, and for the world. So MacArthur making some waves. This sermon, first of all, is edited. There's a clip in between. And so I'm going to play this. And then we'll also play some clips as per uh, Conversations That Matter. John Harris, he put together some clips. I'm just going to lift those. He won't mind. Uh, I actually just talked to him yesterday uh, or the day before. So, 
<clears throat> anyway, it's it's good to share. Uh, he points out in that that there's you know no way to do any sort of scholarship, any sort of critique, any sort of rebuke, any sort of comparison if you don't think take things and clip things and quote things and other. We don't have to listen to the whole sermon of MacArthur. It's almost an hour, over an hour, and uh, it, the sermon is from last year, 2021. He talks about not being in religious liberty and, and supporting religious liberty and so on and so forth. The evangelical publicists, whatever that is, said he's happy to let us know that the new administration will uphold religious freedom. Really? The new administration will uphold religious freedom? Um, I don't even support religious freedom. Religious freedom is what sends people to hell. I, to say I support religious freedom is to say I support idolatry. It's to say I support lies. I support hell. I support the kingdom of darkness. You can't say that. No Christian with half a brain would say, we support religious freedom. We support the truth. Cut. Right there. If the new administration supports religious freedom, get ready. Persecution will be ramped up. Because the more supportive they are of the devil's lies, the less they're going to tolerate the truth of Scripture. We're not going to lobby for freedom of religion. What what kind of nonsense is that? We are in the world to expose all those lies as lies. Okay. So, we're not going to lobby. That's the thing that I want to focus on for a moment. We're not going to lobby for religious freedom. Now, he, that is MacArthur, uh, kept his church open during COVID because he's a pastor and... Now, they, I think they were closed for a few weeks and people kept coming back, coming back. Now, people did get sick and everything else, and by and large, everything was fine. The, the, the point is that um, people don't want to give the benefit of the doubt. People don't want to believe all things, hope to all things, endure all things. Uh, they don't want to extend love at all. They should. They should look at MacArthur and say, oh, man. This guy is a stalwart. He's been in the pulpit for decades. He has been such a wonderful beacon of truth and hope. And I might not agree with him on everything and his stance on everything, but by golly, he's in California, the most liberal state, the this, the that, and he is standing firm on the gospel. No, Ed Stetzer doesn't do that. No, Karen Swallow Pryor doesn't do that. No, Russell Moore doesn't do that. No, all these big evil clowns don't do that. Why? Well, because they're being paid or supported or whatever by other people, not you, right? You're not not the average Christian or even, you know, if you have a PhD, you're still the average Christian. You're not in Big Eva. I'm not in Big Eva and I never will be uh, because it's, it's, it's a guild of people that basically say we're going to take care of the thing. We'll hold the reins and we'll dictate what we're doing. Kind of like they're in the castle. They were assaulting the castle decades ago. They won the castle, and then they closed up the castle and said, now we're in charge, and we'll do what we want with it. And fortunately, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, as the phrase, old phrase goes. And that's, quite frankly, what's happening with so many people, institutions, presidents, seminaries, CEOs, people who run book publishing houses, and so on. Big Eva is not supporting its own, as it were. But MacArthur's not really in Big Eva. Now, that some people will say, oh, he is, he's a mega church pastor. He's not, he, yes, his church is big. It's thousands of people. But the guy who posted this video, uh, Matthew, whoever, on Twitter, did he edit it? I don't know. Uh, now, I will say MacArthur's comments are uh, taken out of context. And the sermon overall, I've not listened to the whole thing, to be completely honest. I just really don't have the time. I wish I did. <clears throat> Maybe I should have before recording this, but here we are. Um I know enough of MacArthur's views and sermons, and we're going to look at some other views uh, and sermon clips that, uh, again, John Harris put together, and I'll just play that. Enough people know MacArthur's point, and the guy who posted this, some you know guy who's fighting fascism, he says, I guess you know on Twitter there's you know we have so few people fighting fascism and so many people fighting communism uh, and an anti-religious. Uh, Christian rhetoric that, you know, we need some people fighting for the fascists against the fascists, right? How many people actually fight against communism? <laughs> That's always my guess. They're always about fascists, as if we're so concerned about fascists, as if the 20th century didn't teach us anything about how murderous and idolatrous and wicked communism is. 
And yet, so many people are fascists, uh, Nazi, uh, Nazi, Hitler. Uh, and they're all so concerned about those things, and yet so not concerned about communism. I wonder why. Talking, preaching. The guy on Twitter, <clears throat> basically he's, it's weird because he's saying, well, this is what they really believe. They, meaning uh, right-wing extremists. He's talking about January 6th. Somebody called it a, dis a distraction. It certainly wasn't an insurrection. It's nonsense. Um, but, you know, that, that just reveals your political hand, whether you think it was an insurrection or not. Russell Moore thinks it was. So he's kind of a snake. But anyway, it wasn't an insurrection. It wasn't even close. Nobody actually with half a brain believes that. Nobody actually believes these things. Yeah, this guy's trying to compare because this was, you know, taken a few weeks ago, January 6th, right? And compares it to John MacArthur, and, and then he says, this is what they say in their safe spaces. Now, again, it's so disingenuous, because this man, whoever he is, is who posted this original video, whether he edited it or not, doesn't really matter, um, he doesn't honestly believe that MacArthur believes that he's in a quote-unquote safe space. He's in his pulpit, preaching to his people. Now, there's thousands of people at Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California, thousands. And thousands, tens of thousands, listen online, live, and or will be listening right now, next month, next year, and listening to sermons. So there's no safe space. Tens of thousands of people. His, his audience is probably enormous, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, besides, you know, the fake preachers like Joel Osteen and things, that indeed preach the gospel. In, in massive, massive international audience and so on. And so to act like, oh, he's... He's having a conversation with himself just about... Just, and then we just listen. Just This is what they really believe. And this weird sort of scare tactic-y, fear-mongery nonsense. It's stupid. But I'm not really talking much about this Twitter guy because I don't really know him and I don't really care to. The point is, MacArthur says we're not going to lobby for religious freedom. Now, again, I don't think MacArthur's words were exacting. Now, he's an orator. He's been preaching for decades, author, published. He's spoken more places than I probably ever will, preached more sermons than I ever will. So I don't want, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to translate what he said. And also, I'm not going to critique it too much because, well, he's got more experience. I think the point is it's been taken out of context. Um, he does support religious freedom, at least to a degree, <clears throat> and using the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment in particular, and isn't against it. I think what he's pointing out is that lobbying for these things, again, I'm translating slightly, so bear with me. Lobbying for these things isn't the end all, right? We're not going to say, and we'll see here in a moment from some of these clips, that we should do all these things and therefore people will become Christians. No, people become Christians when they understand they're sinners. They understand there's a penalty. There's, there's a ca chasm, a canyon between us and a holy God. And the only way to breach that canyon is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not through political action, not through religious freedom, not through any sort of almsgiving or serving or praying five times a day or going on a mission trip or whatever, but rather being washed by the blood of the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, John the Baptist told us. And here he is taking away the sin of the world. But you have to repent and believe. It's not universalism. <clears throat> if you're in the world, you can have your sin taken away and given new life if you trust Christ, if you surrender and raise that white flag and give it to him. That's the difference. So let's listen to MacArthur and see what he says on these issues up against abortion and gay rights and the ERA and, and a lot of other things. I really believe that we ought to take our stand on those issues. But somehow what happens is in the midst of wanting to take the right and legal means to take a stand and preach and proclaim against sin, we get diverted into the illusion that we can change our country by effecting changes in the political system. The reason I don't belong to the moral majority is because I'm not willing to alienate all the Democrats. But what do I gain by that? Because politics isn't the issue. There's no such thing, by the way, folks, as a Christian country, and there's no such thing as a Christian government. Well, there will be a Christian government in the millennium. With Christ ruling. I don't expect my government to act in a Christian way. They have nothing to do with the church. There's no such thing as a Christian government, no such thing as a Christian nation. Never has been, never will be until Christ establishes a worldwide theocratic kingdom. 
All I expect out of my government is that I can get here when I want to get here, not get shot in the process. And that the water comes when I turn the faucet on. We want to do everything we can because we live in a democracy to bring about the best conditions that, that our people in this society may enjoy. There's always the temptation to cross the divide between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness and borrow things from the kingdom of darkness 2021. that you think are going to aid you. I mean, Jerry Falwell believed that, right? He believed that, um, you know, if we're going to reach the world, we've got to have a Christian president, a Christian Congress, and a Christian Senate. That has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. And um, what you do in terms of social change, lobbying hard and fast for social change and giving too much of your time to that uh, has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. That's why Paul said we preach Christ and him crucified. That's a singularity. In our what does MacArthur really believe? Well, he obviously believes as you and me and him are very complex because we're human beings. We have multiple things beliefs and thoughts and they overlap and people are not giving the benefit of the doubt whatsoever the fact of the matter is macarthur doesn't just believe you know we shouldn't do this we shouldn't do that his point my estimation is we shouldn't lobby for these things we shouldn't fight for these things he's going against to russell moore in particular and the erlc of the southern baptist convention fighting to build a mosque now are the muslims fighting to build churches are atheists fighting to help the Southern Baptist Convention? No. Now, there might be a handful of commonsensical people out there who believe, hey, you know what, you have a great system going. I'm not a Christian, but, you know, I want to protect your freedom to do that. Fine. That's fine. And there are those handful of people that do that. But by and large, Buddhists, atheists, Muslims, Mormons, whatever, they don't want to protect the faithful Christian follower to proclaim the good news to say you must repent because every other system is a works-based system. Every other system, whether it's critical theory and the whole Marxist ideology that that is, or the things that spawn from that in an atheistic worldview that's saying you have to be a good person, you have to do these certain things, or Mormonism, Mormonism, you have to do stuff after grace is sufficient, after all you can do, or Islam doing these other things, and hopefully Allah will let you into heaven if he's pleased with you. The only way to get in is through um, holy war. I mean, on and on and on. Like, it's all about works. But reality says, which is the God of reality, scripture, proclaiming this, that Christ is the one who saves. He is the one who washes. He is the one who worked. He is the one who redeems. Not you. And that's such good news. That's why it's good news. That's why anybody can be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Not because of you. Because if it's up to you or me, we're lost. We'll never make it. First Col uh, Colossians, first Colossians, there's more than one. Uh, Colossians 1, <laughs> familiar to many of us, I'm sure. He is the image of the invisible God, that is Jesus, the firstborn of all creation. That means he owns it all, not that he's the firstborn. Sorry, Jehovah Witnesses. He is the one who gets all the stuff. That's what firstborns got and do uh, over the centuries, throughout history, up until very recently. Uh, the firstborn got all the stuff. So Jesus owns it. You look at Hebrews 1 in particular. He's the exact imprint of God the Father. Look at me, Jesus says. You've seen the Father. You see me, you see the Father. So they're the same in the sense that they're both God. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is the head of the body, the church. So notice, Jesus is the head of the body, the church. Now, he's also the head of this dominion, yet there is a certain balance where this world has been given over to the evil one, okay? And that's where people kind of, we forget that or we parse it out. Well, Jesus is Lord, yes, but at the same time, we do have an enemy roaming around like a roaring lion. J Satan has been defeated, yet there's still wars and disease and abortion and abuse and slavery and so many other wicked things that it's like, well, then, well, then Jesus is fine with this and he's doing these things. No, 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 no. There still is a level that, that again, it's hard to parse out. And, you know, MacArthur is different than, say, a Doug Wilson, who's very much a quote unquote theonomist and, you know, bringing the kingdom of God through government. But again, Doug Wilson doesn't really believe that either, but that's another video as well. The point is, we should be Christians, and we live in this nation, we live in this world, we should be thankful for these things, we should take advantage of religious freedom by proclaiming the gospel, living unto the Lord, reading publicly, praying publicly, being with people, having people over to our house, not being strangled like Australia or Canada or someplace else, 
meeting together, inviting people to church, inviting people to our Bible study, talking to people about good things. If we don't have religious freedom, which most of the church has not had for centuries and centuries, and even all over the world, the church still grows. We don't need religious freedom, and that might be also what MacArthur's getting at. I'm not really sure. Um, again, he could have been more clear uh, if what he was trying to th- say is what I think he was trying to say, but I'm not trying to translate it. I think it was poorly said, and it's fodder for the leftist Big Eva people who want to pretend like they're conservative, but don't practice the one another's, don't practice love, don't practice anything, uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, maybe they do it in their spare time, pub- privately, not publicly. In him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on heaven, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless before and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, for which I, Paul, became a minister. Go read Colossians 1. Just read the whole book. It's only four chapters. It's good. If you don't have anything to read read today, go read that. There's a plenary amount of passages that we could talk about that discuss Jesus being king, being Lord, Jesus being on the throne. Because he is. Either he is or he isn't, right? There's two options. Either he is or he isn't. There's no middle third way. If he isn't, well then, you know, we're all just dust and it's just kind of whatever and just kind of eat, drink for tomorrow you die. Paul's words. But if he is, which I believe he is, I believe the scripture is abundantly clear that the reality proclaims this. This is where we get morals. This is where we get ethics. This is why we see right and wrong. Why things inside of us irk us and get upset. Not everybody. You know, some people are fine and they're twisted and demented, you know, killing children or something or abusing elderly people or enslaving people or whatever. Some people are fine with that because their conscience is seared, I believe, because of sin, because of brokenness, because of their own choices and so on. Jesus is indeed preeminent. And I think that's really what all everybody who's faithful to the scripture is trying to get at. You don't see the big Eva types, at least not that I saw, using scripture. They'll use scripture when they want to defend a woman preacher. Or you got to obey the government at all costs. Romans 13. Shut your church down until further notice. Wear a mask. Love your neighbor. You know, whatever. Okay. But they won't use scripture for other things saying Jesus is king. Now, that's why these people are so duplicitous. And I mentioned some of their names already. Now, are they meaning to be duplicitous? I don't know. But that's what they're doing. That's their result. The result is they're being Slimy, slippery. They seem to be serving something else or someone else. Not the church, not the body of Christ, not giving their own um, deference and, and love and believing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things, and so on. Anyway, we could go on. I could go on and on, uh, but try and keep these around 20, 25 minutes. Uh, I think MacArthur was a little off as far as what he was trying to say, if he was trying to say it. Now, if he's changed his tune, possibly, but based on his ministry, based on his actions, based on those several clips that um, John Harris clipped together. Thank you, John. Um, I don't think so. It's just taken out of context. And again, it was edited. Now the whole scope of the sermon still had that feeling, but he's talking to his church. They know him. They they understand where he's, where he's coming from, what he's getting at. They've heard this man preach for months or years, and they know where he's coming from. And so, you know, of course, this is on the cusp of staying open and being sued by the city and losing their parking and this and that and all these other things. And, uh, yeah, to just all of a sudden act like, I mean, the article that references in the Daily Wire is being quoted, you know, what are we talking about, forced conversions? And No, MacArthur isn't talking about forced conversions. Are you stupid? Sorry, are you stupid? Forced conversions, nobody can have this, nobody. Now, 
would we not all agree as Christians, we would love to have an actual Christian be president, an actual vice president and Congress and every single person bowing to the bowing to the Lord Jesus? Yeah, of course. What Christian, even if you're name only Christian, wouldn't want that? Now, I guess if you name only, you're going to be an unbeliever and you probably wouldn't want that because your sin's going to be a lot more exposed, a lot more easily. But if you're a faithful follower of Jesus, if you're actually washed by the blood of the Lamb and actually in Christ, you're going to want that. So to throw MacArthur under the bus and not go to defend him like I'm trying to do or some other people are trying to do um, and give the benefit of the doubt and say, listen, hold on, we have so much of MacArthur and what he said already. Why don't we go back a little bit and not just take this one thing that he said? Are we all infallible? Is he infallible? Does he always speak the truth clearly and accurately? No. Could he have? I think so, if he was trying to mean something else. Maybe he wasn't. Again, maybe he's changed his tune. I don't think so. I don't think so. But maybe he has. Anyway, like and subscribe if you've uh, found this helpful. Uh, Please drop a comment, too, and tell me what your thoughts are. It always generates good conversation, even if you disagree. All right. Until next time, be contramundum promundo. Take care.